Revlon's Fabulash. Uh, hey, can we do so that together? I'll do it in harmony with you. Talking harmony, okay? Of course. Here we go, from the top, all right? All right. You just, Are you normal ready? Normal voice, and I'll be an octave above. What okay? key should we do this in? No, your normal voice. I'll pick it up, all, all right? right? Revlon's, Revlon's Fabulash, Fabulash can, can make a big change, change in your eyelashes. eyelashes. You'll see, see your lashes, lashes get longer, longer right, right before your eyes. eyes. <laughs> really? Very nice. Yeah. You have a strangely high voice. Yes. I'm called Mr. Harmony. I can harmonize with anything. I can harmonize with an animal. I can harmonize with a gentile. Any human. I do a lot of harmony. Did you start to say a yes, gentile? Yes, I can talk Because I'm easily offended. No, I, I don't want to offend you. <laughs> well, all right. God has heartily offended you by giving you short stature. And I am not going to contribute <laughs> to that. You know I make a joke. You're one of the best-looking short people I've ever met. <laughs> Thank you very much. And the worst yes, host I've ever met. <laughs> I'm a stubby little dream, aren't I? <laughs> you broke me up. So is yourself. Listen, <laughs> now, now that we have everyone out here, um, let, let's pin one thing down for all time, and then maybe it'll never have to come up on a talk show again. And that is, is Hollywood dying, as we constantly hear, or is it not? Gentlemen? Well, I think Mr. Capper knows more about it. I, I've never, personally, I've never made... I made two films. Uh... That makes me a director. I'm sitting here with other directors. <laughs> yeah. I made two pictures. So I really don't know anything about really making movies. Mm -hmm. Both my films were made um, outside, uh, you know, the Hollywood precincts. One was in New York, and the other one was, you, 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 you go, go, you go, go, slap, so slap, you go, slap, yeah, right. That's my home country, yeah. you know. I'm I'm take it easy. Yes. Dobro, dobro. dobro. Not only that, but John Simon, the film critic, comes Who? in there. John Simon? I don't know him. That may be his, that may be the problem. I, he's mm -hmm. in my new movie, you know. How do you mean that? I mean that. An actor... And he's playing a part? No, no. no uh, John Simon uh, uh, is impersonated in my new movie by an actor that uh, Mel used in, in uh, The Producers named uh, Ken, Kenneth Mars. And what did he play in The Producers? Play Oh, well, I, there's no... He played the Nazi in the producers, but... He, he, he was Franz Liebkin, the man with the helmet. Oh, yeah. Liebkin, love child. Franz Liebkin. Liebkin. Yes. But in, in, uh -huh. in What's Up, Doc, uh, Kenneth plays a, a fellow named Hugh Simon, who is yeah. the heavy. That's very close to John Simon, a lot Isn't of people it? will guess. Yes, yeah. Does he know? I mean, does he... Uh, I don't think he knows now, but... <laughs> does this have anything to do with his thing on the show the other night that you had a misspent youth uh, living in cinema? No, I've always thought he was a very shoddy critic and one who didn't know anything about pictures. And so... Wait, wait, he's going to say good now. Long, long, <laughs> wait for the so, valentine. Long time ago, he, he, uh, somebody sent me a book of his to review when I was... I used to be a critic, you know? Okay. And and they sent me and I reviewed it for the that's all right and for the I reviewed it for the Washington Post and I I had never read his stuff and they sent me this book it came to me cold and I read it it was a terrible book with all kinds of terrible mistakes in it I mean factual mistakes forget about the critical uh, errors in judgment which I didn't d deal with it was just mm -hmm. factual errors and I wrote this review and and uh, have always thought he's always been sort of a a pain you know and so and he's Wait, so there's no there's no good coming no. And he's, there is no and good he's such a he's such a pompous poop, you know. That Look, it's getting, that, that's, it's that's the worse, good. Folks. <laughs> that's the good. So there was the compliment you were waiting for. That, that I I had this character in the movie, uh, this rival to Ryan O'Neill, and I thought, there's the character, you know, this kind of European uh, 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 pseudo intellectual, you know. And I sort of thought that'd be fun to have him play that. I see. But do you like John Simon? I that's love the it. part we're trying to. <laughs> We got a little off the track. Um, oh, you asked if Hollywood we'll was We'll find dying. out if Hollywood... Let's find that out after this message. Oh. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> Mr. Capper, we all agreed during the break that with your list of stunning films, uh, we all like to hear you talk about whether you think Hollywood is a, is a dying business. Uh, That's been said many times before, that Hollywood has been a dying business. It's been said over and over, probably every 10 years or so, it get, gets said. Mm -hmm. Hollywood is down at the moment, yes down, perhaps unemployment is there, but uh, Hollywood is never going to, but if Hollywood means anything to films, all I, all I can say is that films are not going to die, I'll tell you that. No, they're yeah. going to be made somewhere, if not in Hollywood, they're made someplace else. Uh, the films are the greatest of all art, art forms. It's the, an art form that, that comprises all the others, uses all the others as tools. Mm -hmm. It's probably the 
the only art form that's the new the only art form that's been created in the last probably five or six thousand years or so. Uh, and uh, and I agree with Bob Altman when he says the the uh, good pictures are yet to be made. Mm -hmm. They are yet to be made because uh, we haven't we haven't really scratched the surface of this enormous tool that we have in our hands that uh, fill. So, so maybe Hollywood is dying as a geographical point, but films are not dying, and the uh, fil film art is not dying. The film art is just waiting for somebody to make some good films. That's all. Well, sometimes they say the old Hollywood is dead, and at least one, if it is good, because a lot of those swine like Harry Cohn, who used to tyrannize people when he ran Columbia Studios and all, I'm sort of quoting people, uh, are no longer around, and at least that era is over. Well, I think we but miss... But he, he comes off very, rather appealingly in your book. I mean, you apparently knew how to deal with him, and you always hear him as the worst rat who ever lived in Hollywood. Well, lived. he ran his studio on a very crad, uh, crass, uh, you know, crude uh, uh, method. If he, uh, if he could bully you, he didn't want you around. But if you could stand up to him, he wanted you, and he'd give you all the, all the, all the, 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 the uh, control that you wanted to do your films. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, uh, he was a very, very good thing for Hollywood, Harry Cohen. When you first met him, were you scared? Everybody's scared of Harry Cohen. He, he, said, he, he had such a reputation of being a monster, and he was. Yeah. He was. He was all the dirty things everybody called him. Yeah. But he was also a tremendous uh, catalyst for films. He loved films, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I just think we could use several Harry Cohens right now in, in uh, Hollywood at the moment. I think we missed the Harry Cohens. Do you think Cohens. there was an advantage to the Cohen in the sense that at least it was one man running the studio instead of a, a, a bunch of cooks? A great advantage. He could make. He could say. He could, he could say yes or no. Once he said mm -hmm. yes, it was yes. You, did, you, uh, you didn't have to bother with anybody else. But now you have to get a, uh, concessions from lawyers, from agents, and from. Uh, financing and from banks and from oil companies, oil yeah. companies and everything else. Yeah. Uh, people, non-creative people are running this Hollywood at the moment. And if they get back to uh, some creative people running Hollywood, we'll get back into the These, swim of uh, things. Uh, Cohen and, and uh, uh, Jack Warner, uh, who I never got along with, but at least, like you said, they loved films and mm -hmm. they were monarchs and they didn't pass it on. But these clowns today, you know, they're in the hotel business, they're in the... They don't. They don't uh, have the. Wonder who you're talking about. I was talking about Jim Aubrey and Doug Netter. And <laughs> <laughs> people like we that. We missed some of the other names. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 